Viewer discretion is advised. The creature screamed again. Its stress levels were on the rise. However, researcher Huxtable remained determined to continue with the tests. A blindfolded D-class was brought into the entity's enclosure. Huxtable and his team could see the shadowy creature brandishing its multiple limbs, as if ready to strike. What's going on? Why am I blindfolded? Am I gonna get eaten? Relax. You're doing great. Now sit down. Following Huxtable's orders, the D-class felt around as he sat shakily on the floor. There's a basketball in front of you. Pick it up. No, slightly to your right. No, that's your left. Ah, there we go. Now roll it forward. Oh, oh okay. Well, what's gonna oh. happen now? Oh, it, it, it came back. The basketball rolled back towards the D-class. Now roll it back again. The D-class rolled the basketball towards the creature again. For the next several minutes, the two engaged in a fun activity called rolling the ball back and forth. Suddenly, the ball stopped rolling. Where's the ball? Uh, did it miss? What's that sound? The shadowy entity approached the unsuspecting D-Class, its clawed arms reaching around him. Crap! Blindfold off now! The D-Class immediately yanked his blindfold off. However, in front of him, he saw nothing but a room riddled with claw marks and balls scattered everywhere. Hello? Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Keter Class Object SCP-5031. SCP-5031, also known as Yet Another Murder Monster, is a non-sapient quasi-humanoid creature of unknown origin. When directly observed, 5031 will temporarily cease to exist until the viewer stops looking at the spot where it previously occupied. Video and photography devices also do not capture the entity's appearance. However, observing 5031's shadow does not cause it to disappear. This has allowed the Foundation to infer certain physiological traits of the entity based on its silhouette. These include an abnormally small head with no discernible neck, elbows that branch into three sets of lower arms each, an elongated torso approximately 6 feet 2 inches in length, its pelvis ending in a crescent-shaped protrusion of bone tissue with a blade-like lower edge. The ability to levitate above ground at a fixed height of 20 inches. Traces of 5031's existence, such as scratch marks and blood trails, will remain even if it has vanished. Additionally, it does not require sleep and is incapable of expression or verbal communication. While 5031 has no nutritional needs, it will nevertheless hunt and consume any human or animal it encounters by cleaving them with its pendulum of death. Huxtable sat in his office with a peeved expression. He was perusing Foundation records that contained information on 5031. Hmm. Something the matter? Have we actually seen this thing hunting and eating humans? An eyewitness or recorded footage? Anything like that? No, sir. None at all. Who wrote this then? Are we just going to accuse this poor thing of something it didn't do without concrete evidence? I'm taking over this project. I'm going to find out its true nature. Huxtable's team retrofitted a vacant cell with equipment and adjusted the lighting, enabling them to study the activities of 5031 by observing its shadow. For the first test, speakers were installed around 5031's enclosure, playing various albums of different music genres. The Foundation then monitor 5031's screaming as a way to measure its stress levels. The results showed 5031's preference for classical music and songs by Ben Folds. Next, Huxtable studied 5031's ability to play. He threw a softball and a basketball into its enclosure. Both were immediately sliced in half. A bowling ball was then rolled in. 5031 scratched the ball a couple of times, then rolled it around with the blunt end of its tail for around 20 minutes. When the ball no longer rolled properly, its stress level skyrocketed to 115 percent. Oh, no, 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 shh, there, there, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, here's another one. Another bowling ball was provided, and its stress levels fell back to below 40 percent. When another basketball was thrown in, this time, the entity picked it up with its hands, possibly having learned to handle things with care. Results showed an improvement in 5031's motor skills. 
It also prefers bowling ball for kicking. Then came the test for coexistence. A live chicken was introduced to 5031's enclosure. 5031 observed the chicken from a distance for several minutes and then hurled a bowling ball towards it at high speed. The chicken made for a good bowling pin. Stress levels rose drastically. The team could see its panicking shadow. Oh boy, it's okay. It's okay. It's not your fault. All bowling balls were promptly removed. Then another live chicken was brought in. 5031 rolled a basketball towards it, gently this time. The ball hit the chicken lightly, causing it to move away. 5031 did not engage with the chicken any further after that. See, it's not violent. It simply wishes to play. All right, send in the D-Class. A D-Class entered 5031's enclosure blindfolded and scared. As Huxtable had hoped, the D-Class returned unscathed, even forming an unexpected friendship with 5031 in the process. Subsequent tests revealed 5031's ability to learn languages. It had also learned to draw. Discernible subjects depicted in its artworks include the D-Class, whom it had become friends with, a rotisserie chicken, a cat, and researcher Huxtable. A piano was set up in the enclosure. The D-Class was instructed to play some music while blindfolded and to invite 5031 to play along. The entity learned to play the first movement of Moonlight Sonata in two days. It even composed its own music, though it was deemed crude by human standards. Perhaps the most amazing discovery was that 5031 had learned to cook. Basic kitchen equipment and a spice rack were installed. The D-Class was instructed to demonstrate how to season meat and prepare various recipes. I'm impressed by the things it's done, but cooking? This is just... Hold up, let him cook. And 5031 made its first dish, spicy chicken curry. Huxtable and his team, as well as the D-Class, enjoyed it immensely. 5031 then spent three days experimenting with different combinations of ingredients and spices. It even assembled the words more, more, more with letter blocks after running out of garlic powder. Occasionally, the D-Class would be allowed to visit 5031. During this time, 5031 would actively engage with art and music. On June 30th, 2019, Huxtable and company witnessed a significant breakthrough in 5031's vocalization abilities. As they were busy making preparations for their tests, they heard a crude utterance of a word from 5031's enclosure. Hold up, hold up, hold up. everyone quiet! Shh! Everyone stopped in their tracks immediately and listened. Come on, boy. Say it again. You can do it. Huxtable looked to his left and saw his assistant holding a camcorder, recording. They waited patiently. For the next several minutes, they watched 5031's shadow playing around with the balls. And then finally, out came its first word in its hoarse voice. Salt. It, 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 it spoke! <laughs> it spoke! Salt! Did you hear that? Oh my god! Aw, such a good boy! The assistant shed tears of joy, and the whole room erupted in cheers. After hearing the commotion, site director Yusuf entered the room. What's all this? What's going on? Why the hell are you crying, Huxtable? Oh, sir, it, it spoke. It, it said salt. We're all, we're all so proud. Two months later, 5031 was tested to develop a three-course meal to serve at Biosite 59 Cafeteria for personnel working over Thanksgiving. Oh boy, I can't wait to see what's on the menu tonight. Oh, there's some great stuff in store for us. I've heard the cook's really good. I wonder what's on the menu tonight. The dishes were served by Huxtable and his team of elite wait staff. Everyone thoroughly enjoyed the meal. This, this is incredible. I've never had anything like this. Who made this? SCP-5031, sir. Whoa. So it can cook. Well, I'll be damned. Compliments to the chef. 5031 even prepared entertainment for the evening as well. It debuted its original composition, Piano Sonata for Six Hands, in a live broadcast from its enclosure. The debut received a standing ovation from everyone in the facility. Throughout the night, 5031's stress level measured at 0%, and testing was successfully concluded. 
Revised documentation submitted for approval. We hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to click like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. Have a favorite SCP you want to see on this channel? Leave us your suggestions in the comments down below. In the meantime, if you'd like to see more SCP content, then check out some of our other videos right here. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in our next video. Bye-bye.